It's rare to see anyone command the commander-in-chief. That's what our guest has been doing, or he did for eight years, telling the president, shift this way, Mr. President, and just like this, you're not standing, right? You need to move left, you need to move. That was his job. Only one guy could do that to the president. His name? Well, the president at some point asks, where's Bayo? Well, Bayo is here. Bayo, Moborio, is joining <laughs> us in our Lagos studio. President is your photographer and a creative himself. Bayo, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me this morning. How did it feel to be commanding the president? Well, it feels, um, <laughs> it feels interesting. It feels a rare privilege, really, to, to even stand in front of the president to um, do what I love to do and to be given the platform and the privilege to express myself the way I want and with a great desire to inspire a generation. And for me, the first goal of being in the villa was how can I represent the young people of Nigeria and how can I do what I do but with excellence because it has very little margin for error. And that was what it was about. Yeah, before I go deeper into the conversation, I'm wondering, um, not everybody knows how to pose. Even Bukola, sometimes we have to struggle to just get uh, an wow. order. Why, why did wow. Bukola have to wow. come into the conversation? Well, but, this is was about it, was this it difficult to make the president pose for shorts or it was just a natural? How would you rate him on a 10, uh, over 10? I'll rate him. Former president, I must say. I, I'll rate him. Um, do, do, don't be too generous. Be sincere. <laughs> He's no longer in office. Okay, don't so be the old. reality is. Yeah. President Buhari wasn't one for photographs. Really? He wasn't uh, one for photographs. He cared less <laughs> about the image. But one thing that is unique about photography is the subject. Is the person framed enough to be amazing in being photographed? So he has the posture that makes it, even if he's lost in moments, he creates, I can create amazing images from him, amazing frames. So he is the kind of person that as much as he doesn't care, and I, say, and I say it, for eight years, President Bwari never asked me, can I see the images you created? In eight years? For eight years. Oh. He never asked, can I show, come and show me the images? He cared less about what it looks like. Interesting. And that was it for me. So it made it a bit more challenging because I had to be very careful with what I was going to release to the public. I needed to think and think well before I released anything that could become a problem. So, but he cared less about it. And what I enjoyed about it was, it then gave me liberty to express myself the way I felt. And it helped me be very creative and being very fluid in the images I created. Hmm. I'm sure you get this a lot, having worked with the former president for eight years. How would you describe former president, Muhammadu Buhari, the man? Well, I think for me, he is, um, from my own perspective as a creative, um, he, he was someone that just trusted you and just believed you know what you were, you, you were doing. And I think that was what happened throughout his government. Once he believes in you, once he chooses you, he cares less about what any other person has to say. If he has chosen you and he has given you a role, he believes you have the capacity to deliver on that role, 
and he allows you to do it. There were several instances where people be like, no, Bayo, you can't be here. And he's like, hey, hey, leave there. He knows what he's doing. Let him do his work. Wow. Or I get into a room and I need to photograph him and I know the situation and the environment is not decent enough and I need to move things around. And someone's like, no, we don't have time. He's like, hmm. He speaks, like, leave there. Let him do his work. He was hired to occupy this role, not you. So if you're security, do security work. If you're a photographer, do your photography. If you're a minister, do the work I've given you. And that for me was one thing that was very unique about him. He gives you the role, he allows you to express yourself. Phenomenal. I, I just, I mean, we'll still ask, what was the former president so, telling you? What was he whispering in this to particular you? image? Uh, you <laughs> is, it, is it a top secret? Uh, no, no. Is that a secret? So, one of the key things about being the president's photographer is access. And we know a lot and we see a lot. Mm. And we always tell um, um, politicians, or if you believe you're hiring a photographer, allow him to do his work but you must trust that photographer. In this event, it was um, somewhere in Europe, and the president was in a meeting. And guess what happened in that instance? And I'll say it, I've never said what happened there. The president was in that meeting, and it was a, like a, t a big hall, and all the heads of state were sitting down around the hall. And the president actually forgot his bio, his pen. Yeah. And then he right. brought his writing material and then there was no, there was no, and unlike him, he's always putting it in his pocket. So I was the only person in Nigeria that was in that room. So he looked around and I'm like, do you have a with <laughs> So what he was asking me here for a year was a pen, because in those international events, the ADC or wherever his aids are, might have been stopped like kilometers away. Yeah. And the photographer is the only one that has access into those events. Sometimes every eight security has been stopped like maybe 10 kilometers away and the only person that can follow the president is this photographer so right inside my jacket was a pen Thank that God. i gave the president <laughs> saved, you saved the nation but and by, it shows that sorry Kari, it shows you know it speaks to your own ability to document your time with the president as well because we can see here that somebody documented this for you yes. and and you know you have documented many other times that you had with the president yes. You can speak to that. So, so there was an, another photo, official photographer to another president that was in that room because we're, we're only official photographers that were allowed in that room. And sometimes you have just about 30 seconds to, um, to create the moment and leave. And then after we finished, he was like, oh, I got a picture of you talking to your man. So we call our president um, your, your guy. So we say, oh, okay. I got a picture of you talking to your guy. You know, and we're like, oh, mail it to me. But I never knew how <laughs> powerful, I didn't even know anybody captured that moment. But when he sent it to me, I thought it was an interesting picture that speaks to how powerful a creative could be in the room. Absolutely, and mm. this is a moment you saved the nation. Thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to ask you this, really, and it's a very important question. I mean, you are the image maker, the real image maker. They call PR people image makers, but you actually make that image and push it out there. And I'm just curious, how were you able to capture the president, particularly during that period when he was ill, he was recovering afterwards, such that he didn't betray the fact that you know he was going through health challenges. You still present. If after a while people are calling him model, and I think you're responsible for people calling him a model, how were you able to capture those moments and present the president in that light that still looked like the major general that he was? I think for me, I can only say God helped me to be honest, because um, it was a very, very um, challenging period, a very challenging period where. The agenda for me being in the villa in the first place was I wanted to preserve history for my unborn children. That was why what took me to the villa. I wanted to be the guy that in 10 years time, 20 years time, if they would should say what happened during this period in Nigeria, they can look at my archives and find those images there. And that was what you know pushed me. So that those periods were periods where I needed to also um, portray a man in fairness. Because he was ill, it shouldn't take away the fact that he's, he's still human, and I needed to have that mindset. And there's very little margin for error in this work. So the way I presented him has to be fair, yet accurate. Mm -hmm. Has to be uh, creative, yet professional. You know, and that was the balance in, in, in that period. And it was quite emotional for me as well, at that period where someone with so much agility, all of a sudden, um, I have to be sure he's dressing right because then he had lost so much weight, you know, that period. I have to be sure, um, you know, it, it was a whole lot that period. It, 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 it was quite emotional. 
And I think we were able to still document that process, still document that moment, and we still preserved it. All right. Uh, uh, let, let, let me, let's just backtrack a bit. Uh, not everybody, not every photographer, no matter how creative uh, you are, will be fortunate to become a presidential photographer. Uh, part of why we, we brought you here is also to, to underscore your journey. How did you f get this job to become the president's official photographer? Okay, you need to adjust your cafe. Yeah. <laughs> from yeah, it's an important right? question. Yeah, from Mushin. Yeah, from Mushin to the world. I, I, I think my my journey was it has been one of grace. You know, not that it's um, a privilege. Um, it, it's it's a privilege, not that it's my right. Yeah. And I owe that honor and respect to the president for giving me such a privilege. He didn't know me from. I, I always tell people, my father did not even know our local government chairman. Neither did I know the uh, councillor in my area. Neither did I even know the state government. All I knew was just my camera and God. And I think that um, played a huge role. And the journey started from me studying pure and applied chemistry in the University of Lagos and finishing with 4.26 CGP. And the joy was that I was going to go and work in oil and gas company. You studied chemistry. I studied chemistry. pure and applied chemistry. Nothing to do with photography. Pure <laughs> and applied chemistry. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's Lagos. why you had good chemistry with the photographer. <laughs> <laughs> pure and applied chemistry. No pun intended. <laughs> so it, it was quite interesting because immediately I finished university, I then went for NYC. And my plan was I was going to work in oil and gas company. I had called my contact at Chevron then. I said, oh, ma, I'm going to, you know, I'm coming for NYC. And then I made sure I was posted to Port Harcourt. Mm. The, the oil then I got into itself. Port Harcourt and they said, um, everybody that comes to Port Harcourt or River State teaches. <laughs> Teach <care. laughs> and I'm like, well, at that point, what, what do I have? I had always loved to take pictures mm. in University of Lagos, any event. Was your father My father a is a photographer. Beautiful. So I loved it, but I didn't understand what I was doing. I just felt passionate about it. I could photograph anything. So when I went for NYC, you know, the, I was you know, available, I had free time, and then I started traveling, we were doing rural rugged, we would go from village to village, and I was documenting. Mm -hmm. And I remember wearing an NYC uniform and going into a photo laboratory, because I have to do wait and get in NYC camp. So I'll do wait and get. That year old. Yes, I'll print that very and year. pass my memory, I'll take the picture, pass my memory card to one of the photographers, and tell him to go and print, and then I'll start selling to wow. for, um, coppers. And then everybody wanted my own pictures. To the point that the photographers in NYS camp called meeting on my head. Now this boy is spoiling our market. Spoiling and then, but from there, you know, I felt I was so, and they always asked, what is that one thing you would do that even if you're not paid for, you would always want to do? And that was photography for me. And that was how I moved back to Lagos and I started taking pictures. I was going everywhere, took pictures for DFID. And then someone told me one day, oh, we're told to call you from the UK to come and start shooting for us. I said, you came me. We're living in a gondo. A guy that had hocked pure water in Lagos. You hocked pure water? I hocked pure water in Mushi. I hocked pure water in Mushi. So from hocking pure water to be called from UK that you be, that they should interview several other top photographers, but it is bio they should go and look for. That it is bio they must hire. I said, me. How Gondo. did that come to you? By mail. So at that point, that period, we were sacrificing our time. And it's a lesson for the young people out there. We were doing documentary for Bella Niger, that was the, one of the biggest blogs back then. So we'll go around Lagos, take pictures, and then we'll upload it on Bella Niger. Myself, Jide Odukoya, and Benga Omodu. Benga Omodu will write. Two of us, we're just passionate. I left NYC, came back to University of Lagos to squat as a graduate to learn how to use Photoshop. And I'll come to that story of why we built Madhouse. This yeah. is why we built Madhouse. Yeah. I would go to Unilag, go under the gate to squat after graduating and finishing NYC to go and squat. In the first class. I finished 4.26, we're almost first class. As alum, mm. you know, alumni, from, from, yeah. yeah. Alumni then, squatting. Yeah, squatting, just to learn how to use Photoshop. And that was where our dexterity started from. That was where the quality of work you're seeing today started from. That was where the energy started from. And from there, we, we were going around and Bella and I just started showing what we were doing. And immediately Bella and I just started showing what we were doing, the world started noticing. So being celebrated on a global stage started since 2012, when I won the Future Award for the Creative Artist of the Year. And then from there, I won um, um, several awards back to back. And then in 2014, I won Sundance Institute Film Festival Award in the US, my first time in the US. And all of this thing started building, but it started from the guy that was squatting in, Lag in, in Lagos and then taking pictures 
all around everything. We took everything, barrier, naming ceremony, freedom, <laughs> uh, whatever. We're just photographing. But that was what started building the skill of being a good photographer, building the eye. We'll go for portfolio review. They will critique you. You will cry. And these are the things that I'm so missing. So how did you get that presidential call? That's, call where, that's where we're getting to. Yes, but after 2014 December, I saw an advert on TV, APC National Convention. But before then, I went to Ikiti to call photograph Fire Me, Governor Fire Me then, when he was doing the election. He lost. I felt so sad. I <laughs> came back. I went to Ocean to photograph Governor Eric Beshola because fell. Why? I got to a point in my life where I knew that I was born to be a documentary photographer. I was born to tell stories. Mm -hmm. So it was clear. So I started looking for opportunities to do that. Then 2015, 2014, APC convention, I went there and I was photographing. They stole my phone. <laughs> and it was the point where President Buhari, General Buhari then was voting. They stole my iPhone. Every, most photographers left that arena that day. I slept on the floor mm. at the Tessin Balogun Stadium. And I said, God, they stole my phone here. You must reward me. I don't know anybody. I came out of passion. They said, be passionate, be passionate. A passionate creative has come to Tesla Balogun to photograph. Even with that um, tag, with that accreditation, I found my way in. I said, God, you reward me. I didn't know God actually had me. Mm. And January, they called me and said, President uh, General Bari needed a photographer. And it is bio. You are the one that fits it. I said, me, from mm. nowhere. I don't know anybody that knows him. I don't know anybody. I've never been to. It was, the only time I ever entered Villa was when I was um, an, an awardee that we're doing something. That was the only time I go to Abuja, I come back, I don't know anybody. And then I went to Rivers and campaign started, they introduced me, you'll be his photographer. And that was how the that whole was journey started. I didn't oh. know anybody, not a single person. My father doesn't, my family, we don't know anybody. <laughs> Just put it out but there. But one thing that I'll never forget was the platform um, Debola Williams Red Media created then. Oh yeah, you mentioned. And I'll never forget to say thank you to them because they got the job to be his um, social, um, to do his branding then and then that was how, you know, they got to bring me in and then I started photographing him and that was where everything wow. Let's talk about journey. the work that you're doing now because you've always tied it to your story. Mm. You came from Mushin, Hawked Pure Water and you'd like for a lot of people, creatives, to also uh, pass through all of that and become great. I was watching a video where you said, we don't want poor creatives. I think that was what you said. So cool. speak to us about what you're building now. You're no more working with uh, the president, but apparently you're build, building something big. You've had the German chancellor, you know, people in government. Talk to us about what you're building now. So right now I'm on the journey of um, radically transforming the creative landscape of Africa. Radically. And this has been so because I am particularly thrilled by my own journey. It was a journey of a lot of pains back and forth. And um, during the, towards the end of my work with the president, I studied arts and cultural management in King's College London, and I knew it was going to change my own story because I have always, since 2012, I've been passionate about how to bring the creative community together since 2012. And one of it was, how do we create an economy that works for the creatives? How do we create spaces that serves the purpose of the creatives? So in Lagos right now, University of Lagos, in collaboration with University of Lagos, we've created the first creative incubator, purpose-built creative incubator in Nigeria. Built to excellence, built to taste, and the German Chancellor you know, visited a few, um, few, uh, few months ago. Uh, we had the Honorable Minister of Arts and Culture visiting a um, few weeks ago. We've had European Union, ECOWAS, and all of them coming. And what is the agenda for this? How do we create a place where the child of nobody becomes somebody without knowing anybody. A place where you can come in without anything and you can become something from madhouse. And we call it madhouse because we're actually looking for, <laughs> yes. Go ahead, say it. Mad creatives. <laughs> we're looking for people oh, who, there you go. We, who are intentional about what they want to become. We are looking for creatives where beyond them just being passionate. And we see all of these things on social media. Oh, this young boy in Katsina, in Kano, has created this thing. And then after we celebrate them on social media, that is the end. How do we aggregate all of these talents right. together and then begin to incubate them? So we call it incubator for creatives. Incubator for creatives, for people that are interested in innovation within the creative space and even technology. How do we bring them together to exchange ideas, to collaborate, and then begin to build industries that solve few of Af some of Africa's biggest problems, which is one, unemployment. Yeah. If a creative is able to do more, he's going to be able to create jobs because he needs more people to help him create more. 
So we want to solve the problem of unemployment by making sure that we radicalize the creative landscape. Let us do more. China takes our fabric in um, um, our Ashoke and our Adire. Adire from us, takes, they take it to China and produce it in mass. Why are we producing just one one in Nigeria? Why can't we begin to think economics? So this place would help young people begin to think economics, begin to think enterprise. First is they would develop their skills to do more. Second is, and they develop those skills by interacting with the right people. For instance, now I got a call that Pete Souza, the former Obama photographer, wants to come yesterday that wants to come to the murders. This is someone that we've been looking for to visit Nigeria for years. But now because there's a space called the Madhouse, there's a meeting point. And the idea for me was, how do we create a space that creativity can be valued, can be treasured? And when German Chancellor came here, he said, this is modern Nigeria architecture. And this is the kind of places they are looking for. And that was the agenda. How do we create spaces that the international world wants to come to support us to develop more what we're already doing within that creative space? And the future is going to change the game for these people. And that way, they can get investors to invest in their business. Mm -hmm. they can, the same thing that has happened in the tech space now. Everybody is talking about the tech space, but it started from them creating incubators the that would help these the tech rest. people come together. Oh, wow. The same thing now we're doing for the creative space. Mm -hmm. How do we bring them together? How do we help them get funding for their craft? How do we begin to tell the Nigerian story, the African story, through the creative practice they, they, they are doing, and that's it. And the outlook of the um, madhouse itself suggests mm -hmm. something that is quite outlandish. You know, you can see a container somewhere, you know. A um, cabin. In the yeah. constructs, the entire construct of the madhouse. You can speak to that. And while you're doing that, you know, you talked about the minister's visit, you know, to the madhouse recently. And I had, of course, listened to the conversation you had with her. And she said that, you know, your vision pretty much envisions what she has for the creative industry. What ideas, perhaps, has she shared that gets you excited about the prospects for the creative industry under this administration? I, th I think the creative industry in, in Nigeria now is at a very pivotal moment because we're now talking about multi-billion dollar economy. We're no longer playing like we were before. And that's why we're positioning, someone like me and my team are positioning ourselves to be part of that transformation. When we created this space, speaking to the um, architecture, the Nigerian story should never leave the context. And one of the things is, uh, where does our creativity begin to position itself on the global market, in the global market? So it's no longer creating art for us sake, but art for the world. If the world is not buying our art, if the world is not buying our creativity, it's just like the way Flutter Wave is striving. The world is buying it. But for, for over the years, we've been creating work for ourselves alone. But it's time for us to create both for ourselves and for the world. So the container is for the world. The more than clay you are seeing there is mm. for us. And that's why you can see in the building, there's a lot of Nigerian story, Nigerian-ness to the building. And beyond this, in Abuja right now, on 30 hectares of land, 30 hectares of land, we are building the biggest creative village in Africa. 30 hectares, hectares of land. Hmm. We are building the biggest creative village in Africa. This is the space where we are changing the game completely. And this is the future of <clears> Africa. <throat> And this is one of the things that interest, um, interested the minister. But beyond the minister, it's interesting in the world. This is the, what the world should be paying attention to now for Africa. How do we begin to export our creative products? Okay, uh, let, let's begin to zoom in on a few things. Now, when you call, uh, you call it the madhouse, incubator for creatives, uh, what categories of creatives uh, do you look out for? I know photography is top up there, which other set of creative in terms of the entire value chain? Is so, it just entire creative? So maybe give us specifics before I ask my next question. Okay, so we are speaking to creative innovation and okay. enterprise. Once you are interested in the business of creativity, whether you're a visual artist, okay. whether you're into um, creative technology, Sculpture. sculpting, visual arts, uh, mixed media, multimedia um, presentation, photography, of course, filmmaking, and all within this Whatever the intersection of creativity, enterprise, and innovation is where we meet. So you are creative, but you want to turn that creativity into a product. We are there. Now you want to turn that product into industry. We are there. Which is why in Abuja, we are in an industrial layout where creativity is incubated into a product. You have a tangible product, whether it's an art piece or like the, the, the first one we're starting now, which is starting at the end of the month, 
It's called the Lens Based Incubation Program. And we discovered at the selection, we just ended the screening and selection ended yesterday. We found a young creative. I'd never seen it. I'd been longing to find it, but I found it just this weekend. Who is producing camera photography equipment using locally sourced material? No way. In mm. my 15 years of being a photographer, mm. I'd never, we have to go What's to China. His name? I'll keep his name. Do you want to let it out yet? Okay. <laughs> so, so it's an entire value chain. It's an entire value in that chain. Why can't we export? Photography equipment. Why can't we export canvas? Sorry, Why must we keep buying equipment? Do you mean the tripods? Is the... manufacturing even the ditch for the light? These are things we import, and we are oh, talking like about softbox or yes. things. No way. How lens in Nigeria. So we started with lens-based incubation program. So okay. that one we've already discovered talent. There are people using locally sourced material, wow. and we are talking about dollar rising to one thousand three hundred and something. This is how dollar will go down, because if you know how much. Creatives spend by buying things abroad. We want to buy canvas to paint. We bring, yeah, it, from, to come to bring that. it abroad from, from the country. Even frame. Why can't we go to Ondo and buy uh, do wood and begin to create our own frame? Why must we import frame? If we want to print, we'll go to Germany, Italy, Dubai to print. Why can't we do this? So the madhouse is going to help these creatives begin to think enterprise. How do we use locally sourced materials? How do you use local inno um, interventions and innovations to begin to solve our own problems. So if the creatives can reduce their spending power abroad, well, Nigeria has started getting better. So that's why we're staying between creativity, product, innovation, and industrialization. Let's begin you, to ship cartons you, of creative products to those countries. You know, one, one, those sorry, countries. Karate, one of the things I wanted to ask, is just like in government, sometimes the quarrel some people have is the fact that uh, when people want to set up things in government, uh, sometimes they set up things that don't cannot generate revenue. It just makes the optics look good. Yeah. Now I'm relating that to issue of creative. There's a lot of passion in trying to say, create, 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 and connecting to the market. Now there are some part of the creative that the consumption is quite high. Uh, movie consumption in Nigeria is quite high. Uh, music consumption is quite high. We're doing pretty well. I can't remember any other. Maybe a bit of comedy is quite high. So these other ones that are not as high earning as um, the ones I've mentioned. What is Madhouse doing and your team as well as the entire space doing to make sure that, look, besides or beyond the guys creating this content and this product, they are also being appreciated so they can get in exchange the kind of value. Are you looking at the Nigerian market or the international market or a hybrid of both? So what we're doing at the Madhouse is we prepare you, both in your creative power, your mind, and go to market. We link you to the market. But first, we'll get you investors to invest in the idea. Because if they don't have the resources to scale, we are talking about scale. Scaling is the only way they can create jobs. So a guy who has been creating five art pieces mm. in a month can now employ more ants to influence them, and then he's no longer doing art for art's sake. Is now also doing art for economic sake. That way, we get them investors to help them scale. Mm. So the guy that was working alone as a solo creative, all of a sudden he can employ 50 persons. That way, he creates 500 works. He boxes it, and we help them connect to the market, which is why we want, we're working with the government to see how we can help them connect to the market. Ease of them boxing those art pieces and shipping it abroad for exhibitions, for shows. The same thing with fabric, the same thing with mu uh, music. It is going outside Nigeria is why it is striving. We can no longer be creating work for us to consume alone. We need to create works for the global market. And we've done it with film, yes, we've done it with music. But there are several other parts of the creative industry that we've left to the corner. And it's easy for everybody. The government comes and jumps on the available one that people are making noise about. Mm. We don't want to jump mm -hmm. into what people are making noise about. We want to do the, work, the real work of going down into where the problems are Finding them, ma, sir, can I tell you that the craft industry in Nigeria is nowhere to be found on the global market? So you see them come, they just go to one corner in um, Idu there, meet, at, at the, we keep calling it Art and Craft Village, they give them um, peanuts, pack the work, and then they ship it abroad. Why can't we have a craft institution where you can come in and they don't just come to buy, we ship these things in. So one of the things Madhouse is doing is how do we revisit the craft business in Nigeria? All right. Uh, Bio, there's a lot to talk about, but I want to Absolutely. go on, on this quick break. Yes, I'm going to, with questions. Yes, there's a lot to talk about in terms of challenges, government, and even the way it is. I'm going to ask that question. Your that madhouse is located at the University of Lagos, yeah. so maybe we we'll have the conversation about including that in the curriculum of the university. Maybe I don't know, uh, but that will be when we come back after this break. Bio is still with us. Join us again.
Welcome back. It's still Morning Brief right here on Channels Television. We've been talking to Bayo Mobile Wolf, official presidential photographer. He photographed President Mohamed Obari for eight years and he's been giving us perspective on that journey as well as what he's been up to. Bayo, thanks again for staying with us. I know that before we went on that break, Kyrie had a question, so I won't ask. So let Kyrie <laughs> ask his question before I, I uh, continue. Just to take this message, uh, by the way, a lot of people are excited to see you. They've yeah. seen your images, but now they're seen by you. And Abisong uh, Peter on WhatsApp says, this bio guy is just awesome. He sounds very intelligent and his creativity is just beyond a photographer. I hope whoever replaced him will be good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, he studied chemistry just <laughs> while. Wow. Yeah, that's the reaction we had to. But there's a lot of people interested in this, particularly the work you're doing for creatives. Uh, I think the goal of the minister is to have the industry worth $100 billion uh, by 2030, contribute, yeah. I think, 10% to the GDP. And I think that's, well, the global range is maybe about between maybe 2 to 8%. She's trying to do beyond that. The recent GDP figures didn't quite do justice to that. But... Uh, I know you said that $10,000 is on the table uh, for this particular cohort, am I, am I correct? Yes. And they've been selected. Yes. When will the announcement be made? Tonight. Tonight. Yes. Oh, I see why you didn't want to let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> tonight. But don't worry, you can't tell us. We'll tell anybody. Tonight. We promise not to tell no, anybody. No, wait, wait, tonight. <laughs> tonight. So uh, if you've applied, you're going to get to hear if you were successful. But just to backtrack a little bit, because this question has been on my mind, and I want to ask you. Let it out. Let it out. You know, all the times <laughs> that you, you hold the camera before the former president, you're about to take the, the image. Uh, by the way, we'll show some of the daring things you've done, you done while you were working with the former president. But did you ever look at the president, maybe zoom in? Uh, this was during campaigns. But beyond that, did you ever zoom in at some point and think? Uh, yeah, you need to pause. What was going through your what, mind here? What was this? This, uh, this, this was in Katsina as the president arrived. So for me, um, I always push the limits, you know, and I think for me it worked because I always want to see the possibility of not missing any moments. And uh, these are see. moments that... <laughs> you can't Tom Cruise moment, right? No, and this is not me trying to post. I needed the images that could come through you know, having to sit on this and, you know, do all of this. Uh, what? And, and for uh, me, it's an underlining energy. I can't, it, it, I can't stop. I can't stop um, telling the story. I can't uh, allow the story pass me by without documenting it. And you can talk about it now because I, I, I did it. And I can remember this, the, this video also. These were moments that, you know, really, really matter. This was the president meeting with President, you know, Obama back then. And President Obama was one person I adored so much. <laughs> so you were, you were clicking. Even when we travel abroad and they say no photographers are allowed. It got to the point that other photographers around the world were like, Nigerian photographers, they, he will get there. <laughs> because I that's would the, find my way. That's the one boy. He didn't say Nigeria. Ah! In, in fact, if they don't see me, there was a time that, you know, I was, um, I think I had COVID then. And I couldn't make it to an international trip. And they were calling, where are you? We've not seen you. We've not seen you. We've not seen you. Where are you at? Where are you at? Bio. Because it was always about... I, I need to ask, ask this question. Pardon me, guys. Yeah. You're, you're 36. Yes. Am I correct? 36, yeah. doing amazing things. But I need to ask you, has there ever been a time you had to zoom in to the president and say, is this really Jibreen of Sudan? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to go into that conversation? I have to. I have to. <laughs> no, no, no. See, I, and I will say it, and I owe nobody any apology. Um, President Boyer, to me, is a man of grace. And I think that period, that was what happened. And I still had that conversation with one elderly woman over the Christmas break. And she called me to the room. Boyer, come, come. Tied me to her kitchen. She said, is he really Boyer? Is he really Boyer? And I was trying to just explain to her, like, for instance, I'm a photographer. If you change that, you know now. You should be able to... Because of our drawing circles. Yeah, speaking, drawing of yeah. Which, yeah. Bio, yeah. Yeah. speaking of which, Bayo, there was no um, remark difference from you between that last time that the president, former president, traveled out for treatment and yeah. then he came back and then he had, you know, fully recovered and that was when the controversy began. Yeah. He, there was no marked difference for you. No, that's what I said. Is a person of... Because as it progressed, it was getting better. It was getting fresher. It was getting, and I can just imagine, you know, the recovery process, the medical process. But I don't want to go into that conversation because for me, it was more about telling the story of a man that, whether when he went and when he came back, it was still the same to me. He was he lost weight, 
and he gained weight. That was all. So he never wondered, is this gibberish? No, I, I never, I did not smell <laughs> it. Yeah, whether it's one or not, it was the same person. Our conversations were still the same. Yeah. He, he didn't see me, he asked after me, where is Bayo? So if he's not the same, why would he know what the photographer's name is? <laughs> I don't know where the I, I, know, I know that Kyrie asked you a question. Let's not, I don't know whether he landed on your question, but he will ask that question again, and maybe we'll call that. But before we leave, you're going to tell us your most iconic picture of the president, if, you, if we have it here, maybe or maybe not. Uh, but Kyrie, we're asking him, I don't think you landed on your thoughts before we interrupted you for those. But the images were too powerful for us to let it go. No, absolutely. And I think he, he, he responded essentially to it. In fact, there's a game I was playing with these images, yeah. Find Buari, mm. because there's, sometimes you see the image is so big, and you wonder, where's Buari? Like, now, where's Buari? Oh, there is. <laughs> Maybe there should be an <laughs> Fine, Buari. But uh, speak to us now um, about some of the, because you were, you were not, you didn't receive as much um, heat as other people that worked with former President Buhari. Bayer was the correct guy. He sends images. He's just a cool guy. Unlike others. He doesn't release press statements. You know, and people will bash you like the, uh, um, uh, the uh, Spokesperson. shows, the Femi Adesino, you know, even Tolo, Gulesi, and other people. A lot of people after the former president left office uh, they were, are not happy with him till date. And I don't know if you get that sort of negative vibe. Uh, would you say he deserves that kind of um, legacy he left? And a lot of people say, no, Buhari messed things up. He didn't do things right. Do you think he deserved that? Well, I, I think for me, one of the key things that found me in the room in the first place was I was going there as a storyteller. And my agenda was pure. And I tell you today, 95 to 98 percent, leaving two percent for error due to parallax, mm -hmm. <laughs> was the reality of what happened. So I never went there as a spokesperson. I never went there to, to hear or discuss what happened in the room. I just wanted to capture what happened in the room and presented it to the world the way it was. And that's why, I'm, and I used 98 percent. There was never, there were very few times I had to tell him, sir, do like this. The pictures you see is the reality of how it happened. If he laughed, he laughed. If he cried, he cried. If he was angry, he was angry. That was how it was. So, and that, the, 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 that differential was what stay, make, could have helped me stay away from controversy. Because, again, I'm not, I never eulogized him. Uh, this is President Buhari in Council Chamber on 14th May 2022. Like it, did it happen or not, is your business. But I never went ahead to start. And again, for me, I was a, I'm a creative. And our business is to document and not to explain. That's one. Oh, Two wow. is, and there has to be that discipline of your role. What is your role? And staying um, um, within that role. But secondly as well is, President Boye was is, is human. And for, for, for me, in my relationship with him is to tell the story of the human and what he did while but, in that office. Uh, oh, and no. not necessarily mm. did he perform right. or did he not perform. You don't, you don't are, are, are you saying, Bio, that what I'm hearing is, look, I did my job, I got a good package, so whether or not President Buhari performed is none of my business? No, no, I care so much. I care so much about Nigeria. Yeah. I single-handedly traveled during COVID when people were sleeping in their room to tell the Nigerian story. I risked my life almost to death to tell the Nigerian story. So if it is about Nigeria, ah, ma, I'm very passionate about Nigeria. Occupy Nigeria, I was the chief photographer. <laughs> Yes, so I've been that passionate about Nigeria. But Ma, there's also a point where you get to, and you contribute to your quota. You de de deliver the best you can, and you pull out. And there were instances where we had to do, play my own role, and that was what I did. Played my own role right. until today. That's why you can call me here, because right. now you can see amazing yeah. images of President Buhari. He still didn't answer the question. And my role in working <laughs> with President have Buhari to pardon you. Uh, was to document that, okay, and maybe, I presented it to the world. Okay, I, I like the fact that you just say you only to tell the story, not to explain the story. But maybe last question, because we don't want to drag you into politics. Yeah. You're not a politician. Uh, but one of the first things you said when we started off was that he lets you be when he gives you a role. Do you think that was an albatross as well for him? Because some people have said him delegating and looking away was a problem. Others have said, look, he gave you responsibility. Why didn't you deliver? So what's your perspective of that? I, I feel um, the problem of Nigeria is not just the leaders of Nigeria. I feel Nigerians are also part of the problem. For me, whoever becomes a minister or is given an appointment is a Nigerian. He comes into an office to deliver. And I'm going to go there because I'm Nigerian. Mm. And, I believe just so one minute. and I believe so much that the future yeah. of this country is a collective. 
Now, it gives you a role to deliver. I, as a young person, went there and delivered as a photographer. And to today, not just in Nigeria, on a global scale, you can know that a young guy came into Nigeria and radicalized the creative space yeah. in that space. Can everybody do the same? That, for me, is my perspective, and that's All how right. I'll leave it. Right. If everybody is given his role and he trusted you, All right. again, does All that right. mean that you trust and you dump it? No. Uh. But if you're given a role, deliver on that role, and then let's All take right. Nigeria forward. How, how right. do I follow yeah. Madhouse? Uh, I, I just quickly. If Madhouse I by Tikera. It, if I want to be a part of it, at well, Madhouse, what do I do? At Madhouse by Tikera, you can follow it on All social right. media, and you can go to University of Lagos by the Lagoon Front, right. and you'll see Madhouse. Right. I think I know. Maybe we can Lagos. see it for the, from the third main land bridge. Of course, it's just yes. so We'll front. photograph it from third <laughs> main bridge and send it to you. Uh, a, a quick one before we let Bayogo. Mr. Bayo, you're an inspiration to younger generation. Please, the vision you have concerning creative industry is amazing. Please don't be distracted. Uh, follow through on it. I believe it to take Nigeria to another level. God bless you. I don't have a name here, but those are kind words coming to you by mm -hmm. Omo Boreo, uh, official photographer of President uh, Amosi Bolatun, President Muhammad <laughs> Buhari, <laughs> former, uh, president. Uh, former President Muhammad Buhari for eight years. We must thank you. You're quite an amazing gentleman. I wish you the very best with the madhouse. And maybe one of these days, maybe morning brief will stop by there and do a live. That would be mad. Uh, that'll I'm be, sorry. That would be that'll good. Be <laughs> 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 thank you so much for coming. Thank you so and much. And guys, of course, uh, it's been an amazing uh, oh, almost almost made me I almost lost track of what I was saying <laughs> well it's been an amazing first day of the week thank you so much for your time and company I'm Jeffrey Uzama and somehow maybe Bayer has photographed this edition we'll be yeah. sharing anyway we're going to share it on yeah. <laughs> yes. thank you so much for watching I'm Bukola Koka well let's make this day a great day alright God bless Nigeria goodbye I'm goodbye